Yeah, so the way the um, machine chromatolyzer works is basically you've got three reagent bags, so pH, chlorine one, chlorine two, DPDs, um, sucks it through the tubes here, puts it up at the back in the top of the assembly. Okay, yeah, yeah. up in there, yeah. Yeah, the assemblies, um, the hoses then go into the top of the test assembly itself, puts it in a chamber, and basically this, um, uh, the, the peri pump which is on, on this test assembly pulls the reagents and samples in and basically there's a little uh, tab on the right hand side which is like a light so it tests it via light so like a photometer mm -hmm. and basically you got your your data cables which send the signal to the um, to the board telling us what the readings are when it's done it doesn't pump it back into the pool or back through the sample line it pumps it out down the waistline which is this black tubing out the back there okay yeah and that's at the on the discharge of the unit at the bottom of the unit comes out the bottom yeah 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 uh, the way these units work is basically um, they work on flow so you don't need to use the AUX timer mm -hmm. on the front that AUX timer anything can be plugged into that 240 socket um, and run from there this unit works on flow so as soon as the flow is tripped the low flow light will go out five minutes after that it'll then start testing so you could put a light or something in the bottom yep. there. Okay, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. So a light. Um, a lot of people use this system for the um, for the jet vac booster pump or the Polaris booster pump. Oh yeah. Um, because you can also use a little feature on here called auto interlock. Yeah. All right. So set your times. Press it into auto interlock. That will. That means that this AUX timer will only initiate that socket at the bottom of the unit. Yeah. When the flow switch has been tripped. Okay. So if the other pump has a problem, then it won't turn the won't jet turn vac on. on. Yeah. Correct. Cool. That's Correct. Good. So that's, that's a little good. feature on this unit, yeah. Yeah. Um, and going from there. Um, besides that, maintenance issues. Um, obviously, you get your peri pumps are on the side of the unit. So this one's a CPS three. Yeah. So you got your chlorine and acid peri pumps. Yeah. Um, majority of the time, it doesn't get this bad. We got rush showing. So that's your normal squeeze tube pumps there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so basically, majority of the times, every six to twelve months, replacing the. Chlorine and acid tubes. Hmm. Um, chlorine probably more frequently, depending on how much calcification you do get build up yeah. in the injectors. Um, but otherwise, uh, that's the main maintenance. Every six months, the bags yep. um, uh, should be replaced. And these are reading PPM chlorine, not ORP for Come my on. guys. Yeah, <laughs> from the Helcons. Yep. And um, so that's essentially, in a nutshell, how they... Yep, and they marry up with the salt chlorinator. They can marry up with um, they marry up with the um, pure silk saltwater chlorinators via yeah. data cable, or you can also marry this up with an external chlorinator, for example, a Helcon yeah. or a Zodiac, um, and you can basically plug them into the bottom of the unit. Not on this particular model though, because this is, is a CPS3, yeah. which is a chlorine and acid model only. Uh, on the CPS2, you can adapt the chlorinator, okay. uh, any brand of chlorinator to that. Not a drama at all. Cool.